Hello, everyone, and thank you for attending today's webinar, Accelerate Development by Outsourcing mRNA LNP Formulations to a CDMO. I'm Julia Douthart with Fierce Biotech, and I'll be moderating today's webinar. Today's speakers are Dr. Lori Jeffs, Senior Director of Biopharma Services for Precision Nanosystems, Shizutomo Sujihara, Senior Scientist, Fujifilm Corporation, so with that, I'd like to pass it over to Dr. Jeffs. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Lloyd Jeffs uh, uh, from Precision Nanosystem. I'm the Senior Director of Biopharma Services. And today, uh, we're going to be talking about how PNI and its biopharma services is accelerating the development of genomic medicines. So genomic medicines are the future as we're all seeing right now, and it's a very exciting time for genomic medicines. And using genomic medicines, we can silence genes, express genes, or even edit genes. And lipid nanoparticles, we strongly believe, and we're seeing this now, can unlock the future potential of these genomic medicines, uh, delivering effectively messenger RNA and self-amplifying of RNA and other types of RNA therapeutics um, that are critical for efficacy to various tissue types, uh, including, as you've seen, the, the application of genomic medicines uh, to treat, um, uh, to be basically prevent diseases in uh, <coughs> by vaccination, as you've seen with the SARS-CoV-2 vaccines produced by Pfizer and Moderna over the last couple of years. So Precision Nanosystems has designed a genomic medicine toolkit uh, and it can be used by our clients working with us uh, to develop breakthrough genomic medicines. And our genomic medicine toolkit, basically all we need is the gene of interest. We can help clients design their genomic payload uh, choosing the appropriate RNA um, and, and helping with the design of the plasma DNA to make the RNA. Uh, we also have our lipid delivery platform, our Genvoy platform, uh, that basically designing the right LMP formulation for the right indication. And that's all pulled together with our foundational uh, technology, our nanoassembler microfluidics platform for consistently, reproducibly, and scalably making uh, high quality. Uh, lipid nanoparticles encapsulating these precious RNA payloads. And that's all possible because of our, uh, our subject matter experts working at PNI and their vast drug development expertise. Uh, to date, Precision Nanosystems has supported over 160 uh, biopharma services projects for our clients, helping them accelerate and helping them de-risk their programs as they move toward the clinic. So back to the nanoassembler technology, we have scalable uh, solutions from discovery all the way to commercial. And we can see here for the early preclinical, we have our uh, Ignite system, and then we have our process scale equipment, our Blaze and our GMP system. And we're working on actually a, a commercial system that will be launched, I think, uh, in the next 12 months or so, that will be able to produce uh, batches that are of the appropriate size for commercial launch. Uh, to date, we have deployed over 800 of our nanoassembler systems around the world. Um, and that number has continued to grow as the technology has been widely accepted in the industry. So how you make nanoparticles is critical. And that was our founders of PNI discovered this I saw this need uh, well over 10 years ago. And our microfluidics technology uh, basically brings about a time invariant mixing where the first particle formed uh, by our nanosample is the same as the throughout, it's consistent. So we get very reproducible particle formation uh, using this in time invariant mixing. And we get very uniform particle size. And that is preserved as we scale, which is critical. So our, process, our nanoparticle formation at the low scale and also as we scale up, 
you get the same particle. So you can really make predictions about your particle formation behavior, its performance in vitro and in vivo from small scale, and that will translate as you scale up. So here's some data here showing how we can use our different sized instruments in, uh, actually at different flow rates with our Ignite, our bench scale, our Blaze and our GMP system. And you can see that particle size is maintained as we scale. This is for a messenger RNA encoding EPO and a lipid nanoparticle, uh, one of our Genvoy products, our Genvoy ILM. And you can also see that encapsulation efficiency is well over 90%. And that's basically translating all the way through to scales that are needed and um, produced for, for uh, clinical trials. Okay, so as many of you may know, Precision Nanosystems is part of the Danaher Life Science Group of companies. Uh, and this gives us, a, 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 well, almost unlimited resources to develop genomic medicines. Uh, Precision Nanosystems. Uh, works with uh, the upstream processing where we can provide the lipid carrier, the Genvoy delivery through our Genvoy delivery system. We can help with DNA, plasmid DNA and RNA payload design and production. Um, but we're also working closely with our sister company, Aldevron, on this, who are experts in this field. Uh, and, you know, we have our nanosumbler instruments here that you can see uh, that allow for this controlled microfluidic mixing and inline dilution. And then we work with our sister opco companies at Cytiva and at PAL uh, for downstream processing, which is tangential flow filtration, sterile filtration, and fill finish. So we're offering an end-to-end -end solution uh, that companies, drug developers, and CDMOs can bring into their facility. And we can have a seamless tech transfer. So quickly, uh, for RNA formulation and process development, um, for formulation development, we pay special attention to the critical quality attributes. And for process development, we are focusing on identifying the critical process parameters. So this is those a key in understanding those uh, critical quality attributes and critical process parameters in developing an RNA LMP drug. And I'm going to mention this now, and my next talk, um, we'll hear about in a little while, we'll focus on the analytics, but you cannot do these two activities, these critical drug development activities without a full suite of analytical technologies. So we're taking an example here where we're transitioning from discovery to preclinical stage. And here just highlights some of the important considerations. Designing your mRNA is important, RNA LMP formulation, uh, and the particle formation step itself, and those parameters are very important. Uh, downstream processing cannot be ignored, and a lot of attention has to be paid on that to preserve the particle qualities throughout your manufacturing process. Uh, biological assays and bioassays, we're using those more and more now uh, to de-risk programs, and also running stability studies as soon as we can because these take time, obviously, even under accelerated conditions, to understand the performance of our drugs upon storage. Again, coming back to this slide, um, you can sort of see here that we're going to focus on the downstream processing, uh, which is super important. And we're seeing with technology transfer, you need a good CDMO partner to ensure that they have the, the experience and the technology with downstream. And Fujifilm is, is a great example of that. So a little bit more about analytics. Um, the you know messenger RNA LMPs are really complex drugs, and they need to have again a deep understanding of the analytics and support from those analytics. And PNI can provide that, whether it's the LMP composition, the RNA quality, uh, or the understanding the encapsulation and the morphology of the, the LMPs that we're making. Okay, so again. Precision Nanosystems is focusing on preclinical and clinical development for client projects, uh, where we'll get to the point of sourcing raw materials, optimizing process parameters, qualifying analytical methods, and developing raw material and drug product specifications. That will culminate uh, in the production of a, 
LMP batches for GLP TOX studies. And at that point, we'll start tech transfer to a CDMO. And this process has to be seamless. It's very detailed. You require a technology transfer plan that includes the equipment, the manufacturing processes, the raw materials, and the analytical methods that have to be successfully transferred to a CDMO. And then engineering and GMP batches are produced at the CDMO, and the CDMO will release the GMP LMP batches uh, for clinical use. Uh, a quick plug about our new headquarters. Uh, we're building a, a new site in Vancouver. The building construction is complete. It will be approximately 75,000 square feet. And we're very excited about this because it will significantly increase our space and we'll be able to grow our team in biopharma services, which we're extremely excited about. And uh, this new facility will actually include a clean room where we can produce phase one, phase two, GMP material. The idea there is that we will not be making commercial batches uh, at this site, but there'll be an opportunity to tech transfer uh, before GMP manufacture or after phase one or phase two uh, to, to a CDMO such as Fujifilm. So in summary, you know, we're very excited. The whole team is highly motivated because we're really seeing how our team at Precision Nanosystems is accelerating and de-risking tomorrow's genomic medicines, whether those are genetic vaccines, whether those uh, nano medicines are in gene therapy or even in cell therapy where we're seeing a lot of progress. Uh, so very exciting time for us. We really enjoy working with our clients uh, and developing those relationships. And also we've had good success working with CDMOs. So. Uh, that is, that's the end of my talk. I do want to acknowledge the Government of Canada uh, through the Strategic Innovation Fund and the Industrial Research Assistance Program. They've been with us, the Canadian government, since the beginning. So we're, we're very thankful for that and we're very, very excited about the future. So thank you very much. Hello everyone. Uh, I am Shigeto Mutsujihata, Senior Scientist at the Fujifilm Corporation. And from 2020, Fujifilm started the CDMO service for LNP using nano assembly system. I'd like to introduce this airport. My pre presentation consists of three parts. First part is about Fujifilm and our LNP CDMO. Second part is our proprietary ionizable lipids. And the last part is example for process development by using nanosimple system. This slide shows the business field of Fujifilm Group. Fujifilm is a conglomerate company with various business segments, healthcare, materials, business innovation, and amazing. Last year, healthcare grew to become the largest segment in terms of revenue. In particular, bio CDMO business is growing rapidly. This slide shows our experience in liposome and LNPs. We have more than 10 years of research experience on liposome and LNP. We have developed two liposomal drugs, FF10832 and FF10850, and uh, proceeding with clinical trial in United States. Furthermore, uh, regarding LNP, we have track record of manufacturing clinical trial material as CDMO. Yes. Through this development, we have know-how and expertise in manufacturing ribosome and RNP to apply CDMO service. This slide shows the outline of our RNP CDMO service. Our concept is one-stop service provider 
from research to commercial manufacturing. For customers at research phase, we provide our proprietary ionizable rivets and formulations. For customers at development phase, we conduct scale-up process, uh, pr scale process development and manufacturing. In addition, we have partnership alliance with Precision Nano System to install Nano Assembler System. This, this system allows us for seamless scale up and GMP manufacturing. From this slide, I'd like to introduce the second topic, our proprietary ionizable rebit. And this slide summarizes the basic components that consist LNP. Ionizable rebit are the material required to encapsulate anionic RNA and the endosomal escape in cells by cationization and the acidic condition. Helper repeats and cholesterol are needed to form a form and stabilize particle. Pegylated repeat inhibit particle aggregation by forming hydration layers on the surface of the particles. Among these components, the selection of ionizable repeats is the most important. So what points should we consider to design ionizable repeat? This figure shows the molecular design image of the ionizable repeat, which consists of a head with an amino group, a linker, and a tail consisting a hydrocarbon group. Uh, PKA and the polarity of the amino group are uh, the key, key point in designing the head. On the other hand, the design of the tail is more important, and it is necessary to design the tail in consideration of bulkiness, lipophilicity, and biodegradability. In addition, for, for the wall repeat molecule, Structural optimization is carried out by considering uh, log p. Through our screening flow, we have two read compounds to deliver mRNA. Our read compounds were FL2266 and FL0445 with a track record in GMP manufacturing. An example of the physical properties of these repeat-based LNP is summarized in this table. It can be seen that mRNA of uh, human acylpoietin, FLUC, and the EGF are well encapsulated. So a wide range of mRNA can be encapsulated in LNP using our proprietary ionizable repeat by nanoassembler system. So I, I'd like to introduce the biological evaluation result of these LNPs. And this slide shows the result of intramuscular injection of LNP containing a fluc mRNA. Um, Lucifer's expression level were evaluated and PP25 and MC3 are evaluated as positive controls. FL2266 and FL0445 LNP also shows the comparatively favorable activity in intramuscular injections. FL0445 LNP is used in clinical trial material for prophylactic vaccine. This slide shows uh, kinetics of repeat after intramuscular injection. There is a tendency for FL0445 to gradually disappear from the administration. After intramuscular injection, these repeats sought to circulate throughout the body. 
but it found that FL0445 is distributed less in the liver than in MC3. When intravenously administered, the liver tissue half-life of FL0445 was calculated as 4.2 hours, in contrast to 81 hours for MC3. As a FL0445 application, uh, it can be applied to cancer vaccine. This slide shows an assessment of tumor growth after intramuscular injection of LNP containing OVA mRNA. OVA protein and PolyIC was conducted as a positive control. The graph on the left shows the uh, evaluation of tumor volume and it has a tumor growth inhibition effect similar to that of the positive control groups. The graph on the right shows the percent of tumor-free mice and FL0445 LNP is similar efficacy to the positive control group. And uh, the production of IgG antibodies has been recognized by the administration of LNP and the production of CD8 positive T cell has been observed. It is considered that the FL0445 LNP itself is adjuvant effective and is a promising tool for mRNA cancer vaccine. From this slide, um, the third part is focus on the manufacturing process. This slide shows an overview of LNP manufacturing process. The manufacturing process is so simple that it forms LNP, purifies and concentrates by TFF, filter sterilization, and aseptically, aseptically fill and finish. However, lab scale preparation and manufacturing facilities may have a gap that differ in scale and equipment itself, making scale up difficult. This slide is a schematic representation of LNP preparation. Generally, an acidic buffer containing RNA is mixed with ethanolic solution of lipids, and LNP is formed. This step involves pre precipitation of lipids and complexation of RNA with cationized lipid. Subsequent addition of neutral buffer causes the primary particle to fuse to form a stable LNP as the ethanol level decreases and pH increases. Therefore, the mixing rate and the ratio of aqueous and ethanolic phases, the rate at which buffer is added, may affect the formulation of LNP. In order to prepare LNPs, the choice of mixer is particularly important. Microfluidics mixer is used to rapidly mix the aqueous and ethanol phase. Three typical microfluidics are shown in this slide. SHM is expected to be an excellent mixer for small volume lab experimentation because of its high mixability at low flow rate. On the other hand, it is inferior in manufacturing capacity due to its limited flow rate. T-shaped mixers are excellent for mass production, but can be difficult to correlate with small volume experiment in the lab. The droidal mixer exhibits excellent mixing properties even at low flow rate by utilizing the Dean Vortex. In addition, I think that it is a mixer with excellent scalability from lab to manufacturing because it can flow at the flow rate for as high as 12 liter per hour. So we adapted an assembly system with a toroidal mixer named NextGen Microfluidics.
This is the outcome of a scale-up study for FL2266 LNP using nanosimilar nano system. Graph shows the effect of flow rate from 14 to 200 milliliter per minute on particle size and encapsulation density. As shown in this graph, good scale-up suitability has been confirmed. So by utilizing nanosimilar system, it is possible to scale seamlessly from lab to commercial scale manufacturing. This slide is an example of process development of FL0445 LNPs. Nanosembra GMP system was used to produce LNP at flow rate 76 and 200 milliliter per minute. And the particle size at each step were listed in this table. A little effect on particle size was, was observed due to the difference in flow rate throughout purification, concentration, and filtration. Furthermore, the graph on the right is the result of comparing the filtration behavior. And little difference is recognized here. Therefore, uh, for FL0445 LNP used in this study, LNP produced under a condition of flow rate 76 to 200 milliliter per minute had equivalent quality. And this indicates good scalability. This is a summary slide of our CDMO service. We provide one-stop service from the research phase to commercial production. In manufacturing, seamless scale-up using nanosimilar system is possible. Furthermore, we have experience in manufacturing for ribosome and LNP and obtain various know-how and experts. So we can provide flexible service and the best solution to support customers' development. This is the final slide about LNP. R&D and manufacturing facilities are located in Japan. So especially in Japan and Asia Pacific, there is a little time difference and we can provide time, timely service. Thank you for your attention. Great. Um, so to continue on from that great talk uh, from Fujifilm, I'm going to talk a little bit more about some analytical insights in supporting the development of messenger RNA LMP genomic medicines. So as many of you know, uh, working in the field, uh, and, and Fujifilm are very aware of this as well, um, lipid nanoparticles pose a challenge for RNA characterization. Uh, the actual LMPs themselves are highly ordered. Uh, arrangement of lipids encapsulating RNA and with excipients, and each formulation actually has a unique set of analytical challenges. So one size does not fit all. Uh, drug product is not in solution, but it's in a suspension, and it's prone to uh, prone to aggregation under certain conditions. Um, and uh, you know we have to be quite careful how we handle those during upstream and downstream processing. Uh, high lipid uh, to excipient concentration basically impacts RNA assays. So, and oftentimes RNA needs to be extracted from the lipid nanoparticle to properly analyze it. Um, particle physical characteristics such as size and polydispersity, we have seen impact uh, bioassay and in vivo activity. So we need to maintain those critical quality attributes. And drug product may contain populations of encapsulated and free RNA. Uh, so typically our formulation development process maximizes the amount of RNA that's encapsulated. We typically see well above 90% encapsulation, in fact, greater than 95% encapsulation for most formulations. So we're minimizing that issue. But for other formulations, it has to be considered there may be two populations of RNA, the free and the encapsulated. So that's an important consideration. 
Uh, and lastly, uh, as we are seeing, that messenger RNA is highly structured, it's a delicate payload, and it is prone to degradation. So this is the interplay that I mentioned earlier, that when developing an mRNA LMP drug development process, paying special attention to analytics, both for the input raw materials, in process testing and evaluation, and in the final product and on stability, you need analytics to do all of those activities and you need to be generating data as soon as you can. So uh, diagrammatically here, analytics can be broken into four categories, loose categories, uh, a fifth category in the middle being the bioassay, um, which is very, very important. I'll talk more about that later. Uh, but obviously understanding your LMP composition, understanding the quality of your RNA, which is integrity, uh, confirming sequence and structure. Uh, and that happens quite early on, actually, in the payload design of the RNA. And also understanding the physical properties, such as encapsulation efficiency um, and the ultrastructure and morphology of LMPs are also very important. So messenger RNA, um, as, as you know, messenger RNA and self-amplifying RNA are produced by in vivo uh, transcription reactions, in vitro transcription reactions. Um, there's a huge range in the fidelity, the yield and purity, basically the quality of RNA that Precision Nanosystems has worked with over the years. The quality of this RNA is really increasing uh, and hopefully the cost is coming down as well. It's a very expensive payload, but there's been great advances made in the industry uh, with scaling messenger RNA and improving its quality uh, and improving its impurity profile. And we're learning more and more about how to properly handle mRNA when formulating into lipid nanoparticles. Uh, as another consideration is the there are post-transcriptional capping and polyadenylation, uh, which is also part of the mRNA uh, drug substance. And depending on how efficient those steps are and how well they're performed, that can also result in heterogeneity of your payload which will impact your in vitro and in vivo activity. So uh, Precision Nanosystems, uh, this is a summary of the analytics we're able to perform, both on lipid nanoparticles, on the lipids, and the individual lipids themselves, uh, analysis such as UPLC and LCMS. Uh, on the payload, we have a wide range of uh, analytical approaches that we can take. Uh, and for bioassay, this is an area we've really grown out in the last 12 months, uh, and we're hoping to really differentiate ourselves in this area. I think we're beginning to see that. Um, all of these analytical capabilities, uh, we can transfer those uh, to, to a client or a CDMO of the client's choice. And the selection of a CDMO is important for, not only for their capabilities, uh, such as formulation, downstream processing, fill finish, but also for their, their analytical ability. So I feel that the relationship that P&I has built with Fujifilm is a good one uh, and allows for the smooth technology transfer of, of analytics in addition to processes uh, and the actually instrumentation and equipment required for, for lipid nanoparticle formation. So back to RNA, it is a challenge for LMP production because of its potential instability. We're giving examples here that we can get cleavage by hydrolysis, we can get oxidation uh, on the phosphodiester backbone, we can also get cleavage uh, and also um, on the hydroxyl groups as well. Um, so there's a lot of, you know, we have to handle the mRNA quite carefully, but we also need to manipulate it to get it into an LMP. Uh, we have used heavily, uh, working with our sister operating company, Cyx, um, looking at capillary electrophoresis based analytical approaches. And you see an example here for a self amplifying RNA, which is around 12,000 nucleotides. At the bottom, you can see there's a, a molecular weight ladder 
uh, and you can see here that you've got a strong main peak and you can see some early termination and uh, under the wrong conditions you can see degradation and loss of your main peak so we use ce a lot to interrogate our manufacturing processes uh, and we can see that under the wrong conditions we can inadvertently generate high shear forces when making lmp and um, ph extreme extremes and high temperatures will all potentially result in the degradation of messenger rna and self-amplifying rna uh, a little bit more about uh, rna in, in this case self-amplifying rna integrity um, you can see integrity versus um, identity basically via sizing uh, concentration uh, getting good resolution resolution of your impurities is important and also getting stability profiling seeing how the rna integrity changes under different storage conditions um, this is very interesting i think we, we were very excited when we generated or an article development team develop uh, generated this data um, we used um, an sa rna for gfp green fluorescent protein as a model to assess the impact of self-amplifying RNA integrity on potency. So in this graph here, you can see with heating time, the loss of self-amplifying RNA integrity. Um, and on the blue graph, you can see how that correlates, directly correlates with the loss of in vitro activity of this EGFP self-amplifying RNA. Um, we can also see that Heating at 90 degrees, uh, the, the RNA uh, reduces the intensity of the, basically the integrity of the RNA based upon the intensity of the main peak. And we can see in different conditions as well, uh, during manufacturing, we can see the loss of integrity over time as well. So this CE method really enables the screening of formulation conditions to optimize self-amplifying RNA stability. So it's a little more complicated than that because we've also seen uh, integrity also, the integrity assay also provides information on the mechanism of SARNA inactivation. So we, we also see non-destructive mechanisms of SARNA inactivation. Uh, there's a very good paper uh, published in Nature in 2021 uh, that highlights this, that provides an example of this mechanism where RNA loses its activity, but its integrity at molecular weight, you know, it looks like it's full length, but we're losing activity. Uh, there's other ways uh, to kind of, ways you can get inactivation. We can see through forced oxidation here uh, with time and um, peroxide, you see a, a rapid loss of activity. Uh, and also uh, through this, uh, the aforementioned, uh, the aforementioned um, uh, mechanism where we we calling this lipidation mRNA adducts, where you're seeing um, exposure with lipid can also affect uh, over a short time period uh, the potency of this GFP SARNA in this test case. So there's a few additional considerations um, regarding the ionizable lipid. Uh, so ionizable lipids typically have tertiary amines. Um, and they do ox they can oxidize, uh, and that has been shown by this, um, this paper of Pacardal, uh, that can uh, known to decompose and activate RNA. So using mass spec, LC mass spec, uh, we can get chroma chromatographic resolution of the ionizable lipid and the oxidized form of it, um, whereas other methods have not been as successful. Um, and the rates of this oxidation are basically dependent upon the identity and structure of your, your ionizable lipid. So the choice of ionizable lipid is quite important, not only for activity, but from the point of view of maintaining stability of your payload. And again, I highly recommend for those of you who haven't to review this paper, uh, it's a novel mechanism of messenger RNA loss of activity uh, in nanoparticle delivery systems. So also looking at the structural elements of messenger RNA, um, and this example is provided the capping analysis. And we can see here by the uh, uncapped messenger RNA has no in vitro activity. 
uh, you can see activity here in the cap and a positive control. So uh, again, evaluating the capping efficiency of the mRNA that you want to formulate into LMP is very important. We've seen ranges from various uh, homemade messenger RNA or made, in, uh, made, made by our clients in a research environment or made by mRNA suppliers. We see a wide range in capping efficiencies um, using our LCMS methods. Uh, in fact, in many instances, our client may not be aware of, of the capping efficiency and, and, and the methodology needs to be appropriate to make good predictions ab about the quality of the input RNA. So that's something we typically do when we receive mRNA, we, we assess the capping efficiency in addition to performing C analysis for full length integrity as well. So lipid analysis can identify process issues. Uh, you see an H UPLC trace here where we're able to resolve each of the four lipid components and this model formulation. This is a Genvoy formulation with an ionizable lipid, two helper lipids, helper lipid one and two, and a pegylated lipid as well. So we do perform this assay routinely. I think we perform it every day in, the, in our QC lab. Um, and we want to ensure that the ratios of these ionize, uh, the ionizable lipid with respect to the other lipids is maintained. So the input recipe is preserved throughout the formulation. Um, and we've seen in some cases, some LMP compositions actually shed or lose one of their lipids. And that will obviously change your final formulation and the performance and stability of that formulation will also be impacted most likely. So for optimization, we want to ensure a high RNA yield, uh, but we want to maintain the ratio of RNA to the input lipids. So the you can call that a lipid to drug ratio in other terms, and you want to ensure that's maintained throughout your manufacturing process. Um, Again, we can see here that this is from an experimental batch we made. We can see here that we lost material during manufacturing, I think during down, downstream processing. However, the ratios of each of the lipids was maintained. So you did material loss will in fact impact your final yield, but the lipid to drug ratios are maintained throughout the process. So we're working really hard in this area. We would like to think we're some of the experts in this field with our fantastic analytical development team and QC teams. There are remaining challenges and future directions. Uh, we're looking at solutions constantly, uh, bringing in new equipment in our analytical development lab and promising methods are then transferred to our GMP QC lab and can be transferred also to CDMOs such as Fujifilm. Uh, and aligning on the analytical technologies, again, is essential in a smooth technology transfer. So whether it's payload design, RNA quality, LMP composition or encapsulation, uh, we have identified limitations of some of the current methods and we're exploring solutions uh, such as newer FPLC column matrices for the payload design, larger mRNA standards for the self-amplifying RNA, as you saw at the previous staff, uh, we, we only have standards up to 9,000 bases right now, and, and these mRNAs and self-amplifying RNAs can get very big, well in excess of, of 12,000 nucleotides. Um, standardization of production processes for RNA can only be achieved with good analytics, and we're providing that feedback to our RNA suppliers and our partners. Uh, and also looking at more characterization methods right now, orthogonal technologies such as FFF MOLs, uh, transmission uh, electron microscopy, uh, and lastly, developing standards. Uh, it's hard to make a comparison to something unless you have good reference standards. And that applies to lipid nanoparticles, your RNA and the lipids themselves. So thank you again for listening. Um, again, we're gonna be uh, fielding and answering some questions now. Uh, but if you have additional questions after this talk, uh, you can reach out to us uh, at Precision Analysis Systems uh, and, and some of our contact information is at the top then. So thank you very much. Thank you for attending this Fierce Biotech webinar and submitting so many great questions. I'd like to thank our speakers for participating. Thank you. And Precision Nanosystems for sponsoring this event.
So thank you again for joining us and we look forward to seeing you at future events.